Welcome back, everyone. Hope you're making the best use of the conference, finding interesting topics that are relevant to you and your organization. I'm Satya, and I'm hosting the track two of Execution Stream. Our next speaker is Swapnil Ogale, technical writer advocate at Red Oakley. Hi, Satya, Hi Swapnil. Hi, I'm doing, doing well. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Wonderful. So you're here to share a secret recipe for building su successful APIs, I believe. Yes, yeah, that's right. So I'll be talking about the secret sauce behind successful APIs. Wonderful, wonderful, great. Um, I, we can hear you, your slides are up. I think you're good to go. Thank you. Okay, so um, I hope everyone can hear me, everyone can see me okay, and they can see my slides. So let's kick off proceedings with some time travel. Imagine um, you were in 2019. I know it's hard to imagine these days with that sort of you know time time lapse. But let's imagine you're in 2019. A lot of organizations have you know they've been satisfied creating reference documentation and leaving rest up to the developers' expertise expertise when it came to integration, use cases, etc. And then came 2020 um, and the pandemic hit. And come mid 2020, we were all scrambling to find ways to communicate with our users about our APIs, our ecosystems, everything. In a true sense, 2020 has provided organizations with a, a fair kick up their rear side, if I may add that, um, realizing the value of accelerating and scaling their API offerings. You know what, though? Successful API products have always been around before then, but we've missed some vital signs until 2020. What is the secret sauce behind successful APIs and their uptake? Let's find out. So a little bit about who I am and why am I here. I'm a career tech writer currently working with Reed Oakley as their technical writer advocate. So you might have heard of developer advocates before. I'm like the tech writing equivalent of that role. So I work with technical writers and a wider community in advocating for strong documentation processes, workflows, tools, and practices. If you haven't heard of Redockly before, Redockly makes API design and documentation software with a goal to improve the developer experience. Our suite of products transforms your open API definition into comprehensive and interactive documentation. Now, I'm deeply passionate about the developer experience as much as anyone, but I come, up, come at it from a slightly different angle. I'm not a developer, but I help internal and external developers understand how APIs, integrations, and API-powered products work. I'm also involved in the documentation community in Australia. So I initiated the Write the Docs Australia. It's a global community, a documentation-driven community. I, I sort of initiated that community here in 2016, and I've been organizing the meetups and conferences for them for the past five years. Let me start off with a story. I know people love stories, so hopefully this makes sense to a lot of people here on this, call, um, on this presentation. So parts of this story are real. I'm not going to divulge any sort of you know confidential information here, but and like any other retelling, it's truly just my interpretation of what happened. Now, this is about an initially unsuccessful API project. A couple of years back, I was working on a large-scale API project where we were designing and building some APIs for the energy market in Australia. Our end goal was to have developers and project teams on, our, on the user side integrate our APIs into their workflows um, just to be able to you know, provide critical energy information to the market. The project kickoff went really well, and our end deliverables were clearly communicated to the project teams. So we had a whole suite of wholesale and retail APIs. We had a clear cut um, a product user interface to go with it, yet within a really a few weeks of the kickoff, things went pear shape. Let me tell you why. Now, there are a number of places where we faltered as a team. We messed up our timelines. We didn't take into consideration customer input and the, into the product design and use cases. And since this was such a huge project around a market change, obviously, there was the predictable um, hesitancy in its uptake and all manner of pushback from different, different users, different customers. One of the really important ones that I, to me, as a tech writer, was the lack of timely documentation and communication around it. 
our users were not happy with the technical documentation provided and they found it confusing. While we were busy designing the APIs and trying to you know, get our users to integrate, they were reluctant because they because there was, wasn't sufficient technical in documentation around the APIs. And I'm not just talking about API reference information. I'm talking about you know technical specifications, user guides, integration content. The end result, the project was delayed and we had to go into some sort of a damage control mode to make sure we don't fail to deliver on our new timeline. If you ask me, if you ask me to summarize the whole project um, on a slide, this is what I would have had up as a report card for my management. It was a great learning experience for everyone though. Like the project schedule was blown out by three months. Look, to be honest, it's not a bad, you know, a decent slippage, like considering the nature of market leading projects, three months is not a lot, but it just still provides a good insight into focusing on what we could improve. Like there are always things within a project that sometimes do, work and don't work and are out of our control. But these are some of the things we could have improved. Like the project management was chaotic. The user interfaces was below par. The support was very minimal and the communications was ad hoc and broken. So this is it. I mean, it is this experience working on numerous API projects that I've come to understand and truly appreciate the secret sauce behind successful APIs. Documentation. Often overlooked, often put up on the sidelines as an afterthought, there is so much value that good documentation provides to successful API projects. When I say documentation, I'm not, I'm not just talking about API reference information. I mean, that's probably the core of it, but I'm talking a whole lot that goes beyond um, technical information. So documenting decisions, documenting technical specifications, user guides, integration content, and even support material. So let's, let's look at the journey of an API. Um, how do you typically visualize it? If you're an API producer, someone who produces API, these steps or phases would sort of resonate with you a little bit. You will no doubt have some variations of this, um, but the core of the API journey, the journey revolves around defining or designing the APIs, which is step one. You're defining what the API is, what it does, and designing it before you get cracking on with building it. Uh, mocking the API, so mock representation of a service to pretest that the API design actually works. So you, it's 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 pretty common sense. Like you make sure it actually, the design works before you actually invest. Um, you know, go ahead that journey and put put more development resources into it. Once the mocking works sufficiently well, you go into the development where you're building the API. Finally, you're putting your money where your belief and your conviction is. Once you've done your development, you then go into the testing. You put your API through its spaces when it comes to you know contract, integrations, performance, security, everything. And now that you've gone through the first four steps, this, this step five is the most crucial one. You're actually bringing the API to life. You're publishing it out into some format where you know your consumers can then start um, using it. And the, the step post-publishing, I guess the last step would be managing it. So everything that comes after, things like you know onboarding, authenticating, monitoring, automation, bug fixes, um, optimization, making it discoverable, and also collaboration. So you've done your bit and you've unleashed your APIs to the world. But is this it? Is this, is this all there is to um, the journey of an API? So that previous slide was all about your journey as an API producer, but how do you think a consumer approaches your API products? Like what, how, what is their thinking when they look at APIs coming into the market rapidly? In this case, let's assume your consumers are developers, but in reality, you know, it's just not um, developers. You know, your consumers are you know, a lot more varied than just developers. Um, so developers or your consumers, they typically stumble upon are directed towards your API products in the discovery phase. They want to know the possibilities and limits of your API, find out what is possible in the least amount of time and with minimal effort. They, if they get beyond this step, they then start integrating your API into their products. Once they've integrated, they interact with you and provide feedback on APIs that they're using. Maybe they've got feature requests, maybe they want something else done within the API expand the scope of you know what the api does really and over the journey they appreciate the self-help the self-serving nature and support that you provide via various channels um so what is the point of all this what am i trying to really say here 
So in um, smart based uh, state of API survey um, in 2019, API documentation was one of the top criteria for consumers to evaluating and adopting your APIs. The lack of focus on documentation as a top priority, you know, it proves really costly for API producers. This survey also points out that in the in a previous iteration in 2016 of this same survey, documentation was not even in the top five, but has quickly rose to prominence in the last three years. And it's got a, I'm sure it's got a little bit of something to do with the pandemic. Like a lot more people are now relying on sufficient support and documentation to be able to, you know, um, start integrating your APIs. There's, it's a wide economy. There's APIs, you know, pr proliferating pretty much every industry there is. So. If you don't have accurate and detailed documentation, your APIs are pretty much redundant the moment you release them. Now, before I you know, go into a little bit more into the secret ing ingredients of documentation or to a successful API, from experience, there are there are a couple of problem areas that I've identified with API projects in my experience, you know, working on such projects in the past. The number one problem is sometimes product teams are often so taken up with the API design and delivery that they often forget who they're designing and building their APIs for. How do you actually solve this problem? Like, it's it's one thing, you know, being able to state that problem. How do you go about solving it from a documentation perspective? Before you go down the path of, you know, design and testing APIs without any customer needs analysis, document a use case or a planning document that allows you to have a shared understanding of customer needs. And I think some of the previous presenters earlier on in the day uh, made this point. So make this document a living piece of knowledge and revisit it often to make sure you're updating your goals there. You're not, it's not a static piece that you've, you know, you've created at the start of your pro um, project and then you've for quickly forgotten what it was. The second problem is Simply having good design does not necessarily turn out marketable APIs. And this is not necessarily dissing the value of design, though. If, if anything, it only adds credence to the fact that design is so vitally critical. If you do not invest time, resources, and right skills in documenting your APIs, they're pretty much useless the moment you release them to the market. How do you get around that then? Um, document your decision, um, design decisions and iterate often to make sure your APIs are actually turning into something usable. The better your design and your APIs are adapted to you know, customer perceptions, the better your chances are that the customers might actually start integrating with it, your APIs um, more successfully. And this this one is really a classic. This this one is probably is applies to any project out there is just leave alone an API when it affects every single project. Teams often work in silos and there's sometimes there's no communication between them. Going back to my um, story early, this is exactly what I saw. Uh, the business and technical teams hardly communicated with each other and often failed to share a common vision, a goal. So things quickly got out of hand. Um, the, biz the business was busy uh, promising the sun and the stars and everything to our users where the technical team had no knowledge of the scope of what was required up front. So there's a little bit of that imbalance there. Now it's easier said than done, but technical writers or people in your organization who are helping you out with your documentation um, can actually help you do this quite effectively, document everything. Over the next few slides, I'll try and go through different kinds of documentation and the value technical writers uh, bring to such API projects. Um, now that I've let you in into the secret sauce, let's look at these ingredients. Um, the list over the next few slides, it's not exhaustive. There might be some more content that could that is repetitive, but you know, allow me to walk you through the wonderful world of technical documentation. Right, um, let's circle back to this slide I had earlier about your API lifecycle as a producer. Let's assume you're roughly following this journey and let's see how you can actually um, convert this into uh, use documentation around these different steps. So step one is your design, is your ideally the best place to start documenting your API. Even better if you can actually document the design before you write a single piece of code. I know there's a lot of methodologies right now in the market around you know, the design first approach, the API first approach. So you're actually making sure your design's pretty foolproof so that you, can, you don't um, you know, go down the path and invest in a lot of development resources. Along with documenting the design, this is also a great opportunity to document your terminology, um, setting some baseline metrics for content and also capturing key requirements. 
Step two is mocking. So mocking um, imitates a real API server by providing realistic mock API responses to requests. That's pretty like that's the core of you know the core technology behind mocking. While developers and testers are creating simulations with mock servers, though. You can get started. So when I say you, it refers to people who are helping out with documentation. It doesn't have to be a tech writer. Good if there is a tech writing team involved, but um, anyone who's helping out with documentation, you can get started on creating tutorial style information. Increasingly these days, APIs need to be made available to consumers before they can, before they can actually try them out and commit to using them. So using this data, you can create useful content um, that allows consumers to trust your APIs, processes, and see results instantly. Having these sort of tutorials and other visual content that validates their test is an excellent way of um, increasing tr trust. So it sort of brings us all to the core of all this API development, the process of creating a programming interface that forms the base of all app applications dealing with data or needing to communicate between two products or two services or two systems. So going back to my story, I distinctly remember this step in the process um, where I did a bulk of my documentation as a tech writer. One of the key deliverables of the project was uh, a technical specification that allowed our users to understand the structure of the API, the various endpoints and requests and responses and so on and so forth. Now this is the ideal step to start documenting user stories because remember, we are not only just creating APIs for a single user. There are multiple users who will be using and at least getting to know your APIs um, for their particular use cases. So make sure you're using this step to document the user stories, your journey maps to align with how your consumer will be progressing on their journey. So you can create user flows, you can create tasks, use cases, and working on documenting as many things about the APIs right now, it will save you tons of pain later when you actually market and publish your APIs. Um, API testing, it tests the API directly from their functionality viewpoint, reliability, performance, and to security. Now testers make excellent collaborators on planning onboarding experiences um, for API consumers as they are the closest to the API functionality with respect to integration. Now, documentation is one of those really critical skills that operates on every level. So working alongside testing teams, you can be actively engaged in improving error messages, validating responses, success messages, and also planning on creating user guides and how to art, how to um, sort of material for the APIs themselves. So you're confident now that your API definition is ready for production use. That means you are good to publish it. Publishing is a way of, you know, to show that the API is in a stable state and its endpoints can be reliably called from other applications. This is literally the point where it all becomes a reality. Ideally, if you follow, followed along on the documentation journey until now, you're ready for the docs to be unleashed as well. Your docs team would have you know, a number of de deliverables are ready by about now, like reference documentation, use cases, examples, user guides, tutorials, um, visual content. You could also have operational content ready for post-published world. So one that helps your support teams with troubleshooting, bug fixing, feature requests, or something in terms of managing um, future state of the APIs. Do you know what user? Do you know what your consumers are looking for in your API documentation? The Smart Bear API report had some indications of this. If you look, the top five most important things are like your examples, your status and errors, your authentication error messages. So, and also getting started guides. So, how do consumers effectively use your APIs into their products and quickly get started? So, there's a whole list of documentation effort required to bring all of this into fruition. Now, post-publishing, it's now time to you know, manage your API assets. So the API themselves, but also the content to gain deeper visibility into your API's performance, your usage, and evolving requirements. So this, this is where your consumers are now you know, providing you, you more feedback on, can we expand the API to do this? Or is there a possible use case for your API for allowing us to do this? So it's monitoring those API operations, things like uptime, your outrages, your functionality and performance. Now, this is an ideal way to evaluate user feedback on documentation and fine tune the content um, to meet the user needs. Now, support content is a big piece of this process. 
So it adds things like troubleshooting, use case information for different scenarios. So this, this, these are the different sort of you know ways you can actually help your management or support teams create useful content for your consumers. Um, all right, let's take a little bit of a pause here. Now that you've tasted the secret thought, you would think that this is it, like all that different steps involved and all the documentation you've created uh, would be it. But wait, it's not. It's just not the end of the journey. Having worked on multiple projects involving APIs, I've seen and felt how consumers uh, provide feedback closely. Publishing API reference information may all be, you know, it might be well and good, but how do you add, go about adding some sizzle to this dish? Full disclosure, I currently work for an organization that is in the business of delivering awesome developer experiences via their products, or more specifically, the developer portal. So developer portals are how your consumers understand, interact, adopt, monitor, and govern your um, API products. I think a few of the speakers early on spoke about the value of good developer portals as well. Unlike user interfaces or web pages for other products, APIs really can't claim to be intuitive as they literally have no front end. Um, in some cases, they might, but the bulk of it is just a piece of code. They're just merely endpoints that return results and you know status codes. So developer portals now have a slightly broader function than just being pure reference content. This what, what they do are essentially serve as a self-support hub for anything to do with the organization's API offerings. They're essentially the face of your APIs coming out of the organization. They're your brand value in this digital age. And, the, and, and this point is where you realize that they just don't serve developers. Um, they've become the go-to place for education, training, community, and marketing. I'll just quickly run through a couple of scenarios how you can you know, shape your developer portals into becoming these um, um, self-sustaining sort of hubs for, for your API offerings. So when you look at education, um, typically with a full developer portal, you will have topics covering not only API reference material, but also you know content around how to onboard new users or developers getting started, technical details of authorizing and authenticating, and some solid use cases. Now this is worth its weight in gold. When you have a full set of documentation that explains the basic behavior of your APIs, it educates the your consumers and also the business stakeholders on how to successfully integrate with your APIs. In, in addition to educating, developer portals also function as an excellent training ground for developers and other users to use the API product. Now, this is where technical writers get to shine by adding you know, good overview information, scenarios, and examples of API endpoints and where they can be used. Um, also, maybe you know, depict various workflows on and user journeys with of what's possible with your APIs. Using good technical writing practices, writers can actually add the, the sizzle, the context around the APIs themselves. Um, this is the developer portals are also excellent ways of you know, interacting with your community. If your APIs are public and open source, you could have a community factor to your development portals. So you factor in things like open source contributions, feedback from users directly, something that can be you know, quickly actioned and expanded within your API products or API offerings. And if your core product is any API or APIs form a part of your you know, software strategy, developer portals can form a part of your marketing strategy as well. They're an excellent way of selling your product and generating a level of trust from your users as well. They, they can cover things like you know pricing models, evaluation methods, and also can be used to showcase other customer implementations. It's sort of it's all ways and means to build your customers, your consumers' trust into your API product. I think that's all we have time for today. So just a quick summary. Um, so the difference between successful and unsuccessful projects is often how much you've documented throughout you know throughout the process. Documentation is an extremely powerful tool to bring along everyone on the same journey. The lack of focus on documentation as a top priority, like I said, in the uh, is it can prove costly for API providers, and that's well documented in the state of API service. The key to successful APIs is how well your customers can discover, onboard, and integrate your APIs into their products. If you have good documentation to showcase and educate customers, you can be well assured of their success. 
Um, and that's everything from me. So if you need, I'm, I'm on Twitter and active on LinkedIn. So if you need to um, get in touch with me, I feel free to, you know, ping me or send me a message um, and I'll, I'll, happy to, I'll be happy to talk about documentation. Great talk, Swapnil. Uh, we have a few questions. So the first one, uh, what do you see as a challenge in API documentation compared to documenting other software products that has user interface or digital products and things like that? So, uh, yeah, so I think from from experience, I think it comes down to the fact of you know having that early access to the to the development methods and um, the designs as well. So um, with with products, especially typically software products that have um, some sort of a user interface where users can you know uh, or the technical writers get to play around with the um, particular products in a some sort of a safe environment with apis it's a little bit different because there is no ui it's more comes down to the fact that if you've got good design practices and if you can visualize it properly um, it then adds a little bit more value so making sure you've got access to the right products and the right you know resources and also the knowledge um, is documented well makes makes um, API documentation, a whole different challenge. <laughs> All right. And how do you make uh, your API document uh, documentation appealing for business, non-technical, or executives who are willing to make investment in their decisions? Uh, yeah, I'm glad you asked that because a lot of um, what I spoke about developer portals, um, it's often that mindset where organizations just look at API documentation as being, you know, just reference materials. But do you, if you invest in the right resources, like, you know, technical writers, or I think there's a quite a few different um, professionals out there, like your UX design, um, sorry, UX writers or content designers, or even people with a technical marketing background who can actually help you craft that message really well. So it, it, it in the end, it comes down to someone who's got a, you know specific skills and passion for documentation, who can help you build that message around your API. So it's not just reference information. It also adds a little bit of, you know, pizzazz in terms of um, marketing um, examples, making sure you, you've, you've got enough material to actually you know make those apis appealing so investing in the right resource is probably the right answer to go about it wonderful thank you so much and it is a difficult industry to get the right technical marketing individual who can <laughs> who can be part of your team to add that so i'm facing that anyways um, so thank you so much swapnil uh, uh wonderful to have you here with us and um uh thanks for sharing your insights no worries. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.